All right. <laughs> Ooh, that's still too high. I just brewed. I just brewed this. What are you drinking? Some coffee. <sighs> Drink some coffee. I got uh my usual. Wow, Death Wish, in nice. a beers and fierce cup. Beers and fierce cup. Nice. A little demon like thing. You know, it looks kind of cosmic horror ish. I do things. Yeah, on yeah, true, true. I uh, I had I have several several Cthulhu shirts I could have worn today. And then <laughs> Me I, too. And I took a shower early and I, I put on my my bell for brewing uh, shirt and I was like, you know what, I'm not changing. I'm just too I'm just too lazy. So make pretend I'm wearing one of my many Cthulhu well, it, shirts. It looks like a, it, I mean you got like a it looks like a relic you got on your shirt. Kind there of you thing. go. So that's there you go. That's exactly what that is. I got my 40th birthday Cthulhu shirt going on. Nothing, <laughs> nothing is cultish as a birthday celebration. You know what I'm saying? Right, that is true. <laughs> That's very true. And you know, who, you know who who couldn't care less about your birthday? Cthulhu. So that's perfect. He couldn't. I'm I'm ex- insignificant to Cthulhu, <laughs> which I think we heard that many times in the past uh, yeah. uh, uh, four films. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So speaking of the four films, you you uh, it took you a while, but you got to cosmic horror. I didn't want to, be, to I... you. In all fairness, Joe, to you, every every movie is cosmic horror. I mean, let's <laughs> let's be honest. But these were labeled cosmic horror movies. Yeah, straight up cosmic horror. I had to do it. I was like, it's time. You know, we we're, we've already had some that intertwined in their own way. Uh, you know, the last three were the post apocalyptic sci fi, the zombie. We did the underwater movies that were kind of almost, you know, like underwater itself was kind of a or aquatic. Actually, we called it was aquatic, had right. a little bit of a cosmic horror thing to it. And um, so the yeah, lighthouse and, movies we did all those light, lighthouse lighthouse. Movies. Uh, the Burrowers was considered cosmic horror. Very, very, yeah. So this is a uh, this is a good mixed bag of movies here. Yeah. So uh, let's let's uh, let's dive right in. <laughs> so the, the first one you, you you sent me, and I hadn't seen any of these movies before. In fact, what's funny is I hadn't even heard of these four movies. Before. Oh wow! I thought you seen at least one of them. Oh, that's no, cool. No, no, you know me. I don't I don't watch a ton of horror. Yeah. At, at, at all. In fact, last night to, to totally go against what we're doing, I watched um, what is it? The uh, Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah. Yeah. I'd never seen. I I saw Cloverfield. I saw that one in the movies, but I had never seen the Cloverfield Paradox. So I watched that because my wife wasn't home, and she hates science fiction movies. So mm-hmm. uh, I watched that. I'm like, eh, it was, it was right. okay. Yeah, it was, it was all right. Okay. I, I like how they connect the stuff. I like the you did a little bit of the multi first thing. I wish you did a little better because sometimes, unfortunately, some movies fall into a you know typical formula, and this one did. Yeah. Um, did yeah. I mean, play. you you knew what was you knew what was going on. You knew it was going to happen. Yeah, but uh, it, was, it was all right. All right, so our first actual movie here is from 2011. It is Absentia. Yes. And uh, so this was my first first impression. I gotta be. Honest, I was like, "Holy crap! Is this a uh, student film?" Mm-hmm. Uh, this was really like a very very cheap, cheaply shot movie. In fact, I looked it up. Seventy thousand dollars. This movie cost, mm-hmm. which is ridiculous. That uh, in 2011, even that it cost seventy thousand uh, dollars to to shoot this movie. That is crazy. I think Clerks was done for like half of that. Is that a no? But, I think that was a Kickstarter too. On top of it. Oh well, really? Wow. Yeah, I found and out at the so, end. I didn't know. This is my second time seeing it. And I didn't. Um, and I didn't know that. So it is a. It's a weird movie. It's purposely weird. Mm-hmm. It's purposely vague. I love the um so I guess the 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 main idea is the woman's husband has disappeared, and after however many years it is, seven years, ten years, whatever, she uh basically absentia she declares him dead to move on with her life. Uh, she's pregnant. she has a um on again off again, I guess so so obviously she met the police officer. While um, he was looking for her husband, and then her crazy odd sister shows up to stay with her, and um, a lot of nutty things happen in this one. Um, very subtle. Yeah. This one, there's there's some 
there's a, some of those weird characters in it, but uh, there's not a huge cast. It's um, it's basically it's a it's a it's her apartment, and then catacorner down the street is a tunnel leading in over to the next development in the city kind of thing, and uh, that's where all of pretty much those two spots is where everything happens. Yeah, this um. I haven't seen this since was was I'm gonna think I think seven years, and this is uh, Mike Flanagan who did this movie. Now he's he's a big name now. He did uh, he did Doctor Sleep, he did uh, House uh, the ha- uh, House, oh my god, the Haunting of Hill House because I I had like five different ways to say it in my head. He did the <laughs> the Blind Manor, uh, most recently. Um, so was Midnight this one Mass. of his first movies? One of his first movies. Yep. Oh. So and then I seen his second film, Oculus, first, and I kept hearing about this one. Like, I'm like, I gotta check it out, not knowing it was cosmic horror. Right. And you know, it seemed like a typical ghost story too. You really dug deep into the missing people and that tunnel, and I was just like, this is one that uh, this is one of those cool slow burns. And he's very well known for that. Like his style is like that throughout his movies now and the shows he does. It's just now he's got more budget. Right. To see to revisit this movie years later after watching because i'm a huge fan of his stuff like he's probably one of the only ones i enjoy more of any supernatural he does because it's, it's just so subtle how he does things like just like when the husband's ghost or whatever how she sees him just he's out he's in the corners and he just walks and like you know right. those freaky little jump scares he's probably one of the best ones to do that and to see it in such an early stage after so many years and then and how far he's come it's really cool so i was really i was really digging that a lot and then revisiting that and then and then there's so many different like things to catch in this movie um, that I was trying to recatch again. You know all the little like uh, things people were saying, hinting towards what's in the tunnel and and uh, his character development that I love. Like especially with the sister, like you really put the focus on a lot more focus. It was on the relationship of the sisters, but then it started putting more on the on the uh, on the uh estranged sister who's going through a lot of like you know her drug addiction come back home right, and yeah. help our sister type of thing so it was an interesting flip yeah i did i did like that with this sister because you didn't know you didn't know which one was the main character yeah. they both had they both had a lot of problems with everything. And, I, and i thought that was pretty neat that you went back and forth the 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 interplay with them i mean uh, you know the acting was all right. I mean, yeah. you're, you're talking. It's this is like, it's like a college film, you know. Yep. I mean, this is this is what this is. So, the acting is not great, but it was, uh, it was definitely. Uh, I've seen a lot worse. Yeah. And um, and I thought it was, uh, you know, I thought it was pretty good for 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 all that for what it was. I thought it was very good. Yeah. You know, I could see you could take this. You could take this script, and. Instead of seventy thousand dollars, you can go. Okay, I'm going to put seventy million dollars into this. I would love to see a, that. A giant, you know, you can do all the the uh, really the dark and the you'd have the music, you'd have all of this. I think it would be a probably a a, a pretty big horror movie because it's a basic plot. I like the ending. Mm-hmm. I thought the um. The stuff I, I like better, it's kind of, for me, it was, this was kind of Blair Witch where you didn't see everything. Yep. You didn't, you didn't have to see everything. It was in your mind. You see brief glimpses of things at points and you don't know what's real, what's not is, is mm-hmm. you know, um, and I, I, you know, that, I, I guess that part of it was, uh, was pretty good. Is it a cosmic horror movie though? You know, I mean, I, there's some tropes. Yeah. But I don't think it, I, I, I think it's, I think there's too much of, there's too many, too much of the character in it for it mm. to be this, everybody just feels hopeless and, you know, to me, to me, Cosmic Car is Lovecraftian, one guy slowly going insane. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing he can do about it, no matter what, right. who he talks to, what he does. And I don't really see that in this movie. You know, um, I don't know. What, what's your opinion? Um, it's definitely not Lovecraftian, but it definitely has elements of the cosmic horror because you do have a entity hiding in a certain area in another dimension. Almost, you know, you, you do hear people trapped in there. Right. 
Sure. Um, there are like gifts, the whole thing with like exchanging gifts and the way people speak that this whole town is this, this Midwestern town is so afraid of this like thing or like, the tunnel is almost a character of itself. It's like an entity itself. Right. Um, and so, you know, the offerings, you know, it's almost like this, like giving things to a God and then, and what reason these people have like you, and then I would love about that and what plays really well with as, as a possible, you know, be a cosmic horror movie is like how it keeps um, revealing the mystery as you go further along. And there are, and I think they did play the insanity a little bit because they went when they switched to the sister's eyes. You think she's on drugs because then the cop, then you switch to the cops narrative where he's like, he's right. you definitely, you could tell he's definitely got, uh, you know, like a more of an edge on on certain people who are like that. He doesn't believe in redemption. He, he's definitely got a, a, a type of prejudice against her. Right. So, and now he's got this, you know, obviously he's in love with her sister and there's a lot, there's a lot of like things, a lot of different, like a, like a, like a, like a lot of uh, tension and, and, and drama between these characters because of the current events. And, um, and you know, the fact this thing loves to torment you, torment the people and the, some things that people say, you know, oh, it's asleep, do you see me? And so there was a lot of, there's a lot of elements, like definitely like yeah. they're very subtle. They're very subtle. Yeah. Um, yeah. That one, that's, that's hard. Cause if you compare it to Lovecraft, I can see that. And I think it's more towards like, maybe even like, um, and here I go, I'm going to screw up the name, the house in the borderlands, that writer more, more towards that type of cosmic horror, maybe not creature siege. I don't remember his name. I suck. <laughs> you know, I don't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> All right, what else you got on that one? You, you, we done with that um, one? No, yeah, um, that's. I mean, I like you. I like the ending a lot. Um, I really loved the char- I do love the characters. I didn't mind the acting. It's definitely you know independently done. Um, and yeah, I I was really happy to revisit. I've been wanting to do it for a little while. Um, so I'm really cool. We got to talk about it a little bit. I'm really cool. I'm really happy we got to talk about it. It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So the the next one is the Deep House. Mm-hmm. From 2021. Brand, brand spanking new. This is a French movie. Yes. And it's about a couple who are, I guess they do a um, podcast YouTube thing where they go around going through abandoned buildings and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he seems like kind of a, um, he seems kind of a douchebag. Adventurous douchebag, yep. Yeah, an adventurous douchebag. Like he's not afraid <laughs> to do anything, but he always jumps out and scares her and stuff like that and she kind of you know goes along for the ride he's way more into it i think than she is with the that part of it and so they're yeah. out in the middle of uh, france and they're looking for a um a a town who, that's been flooded yeah. um in a valley for for water which reminds me of a i, I, I think it's called the walking which is a bentley little uh, book from uh, oh. years where they flood in Arizona. Uh, I might have to read that valley because uh, you know basically for the same idea. So I thought it was um, thought it was interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, most of this movie is actually shot underwater. Yeah, and uh, I had problems with it. Yep, I had a lot of problems with it because they're in this, uh, you know. They 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 dive down to this house, and they go in, and everything is underwater, but everything is just perfect. Everything is mm-hmm. the the dolls, the china, everything is just where it is. It's kind of like they slowly filled up. I mean, which is I'm, I'm sure what they did. They built the set, and then they slowly filled the room with water. Mm-hmm. So like nothing is out of place except when it's horrific, when things need to be moving around. Um, it reminds me, of, and I, having never seen a Slipknot video, this to me was <laughs> stuff that you would see in a Slipknot video. Okay, yeah, this I is like a that. new, a new metal. People hanging on hooks and creepy dolls, and you know the old <laughs> Victorian house kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot. There was there was a couple of, I guess you could jump scares in this one. That stupid um, catfish made me jump both times. <laughs> I was so pissed, like that stupid fish, man. I, I, and I was waiting for it too. I was waiting yeah. for something to come out, and that this big ass catfish scared the crap out of me. Yeah, that was uh, that was kind of. So was this? I don't know. Was this movie shot in three D? Because there was so much stuff 
that kept coming at you in this movie. And I was like, no, it, it reminds me of a, it reminds me of like, you know, uh, like all the old, the 1980s, those 3D movies, the catfish mm-hmm. comes right at you. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's stuff that's moving around. And I'm like, I, I, I uh, looked at, I try to look it up and I'm like, this has got to be where they filmed this as a 3D movie or something. Just the way it, the way it looked, the, yeah. Uh, the things coming at you, you know, the hooks and, and all the other things that were coming out. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they get trapped in this house underwater. And so I like it's the Hitchcockian. They only have so much air mm-hmm. and you're constantly they're like, I'm at 70 percent. I'm at four percent. You know what I mean? Like you're going to die if you if you run out of very oxygen. claustrophobic. Yeah. And um yeah, there were some really there was some scenes where the room is packed with stuff and they're trying to they're trying to go through. And I'm also like, I don't care how good of a scuba diver you are, you gotta knock shit off the tables and stuff. <laughs> right. Constantly going in, in these rooms with these tight little sp- uh, spaces and stuff. Um it, I mean, it, you know, the ending was you, you knew for me you knew it was you knew it was coming as soon as mm-hmm. As soon as the movie started, you 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 know who's who's living, who's dying, what's going to happen on yeah. this one. Um, and it wasn't really like a but get was it a found footage movie because everything is through the through the camera. But I think it was just more of the way they shot the movie rather than let's let's do Blair Witch underwater, you know. That's yeah. That's what I I thought it was going that direction. I'm like, wait, I don't remember this being found footage, but. No, then they switched like point of views between, you know, um, their their camera, and then the um, then the the peeping Tom Bob. I thought that was kind of funny. The uh, the, the drone that right. they had, that, I thought that was kind of neat. So I think it was neat how they switched point of views to give like a more like broader sense of like you know, so you, you can get a feel for everything. Right. Um, but it does and the same thing with the uh, Absentia. Like you said, it does. Both movies have that Blair Witch feel. Um. I'm a, with the house. It's funny. I was thinking the same thing about things. I, I was like, man, why is anything like decomposing? And then even they asked, they said nothing's decomposing. And I think, cause again, and this is why I enjoy about also all four of these movies do this. There's like a, there's a revelation of what's going on, like a mystery on, on, on unfolding. And then again, right. very, very Lovecraftian and cosmic horror. And then like you, you, whatever happened in this house, I think caused these to, for this house to stand in time. I think mm-hmm. that's what it seemed like. Cause once everything really got crazy, they were stuck. They couldn't find a way out. It was almost like another right. form of that, you know, going insane. And then if you lose your ear, of course that, that, that messes when your when your ear yeah. s- supply yeah. keeps depleting, that's going to mess your brain cells. Yeah. I was, I was hope I was, oh man. When they were in the town, um, the, the, the couple Tina and, oh, I forgot the boyfriend's name. You know that, um, remember they're like, oh, this looks like a, the boyfriend's like filming. He's like, this looks like your typical French town. Uh, right, right. Yeah. D- dilapidated. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Like even the center, when they're standing in that memorial, I said, this is Innsmouth. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely. This is Innsmouth. I was like, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm honestly catch this because I know it's your favorite story. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, this is like exactly oh, creepy, when I read the, the creepy book. creepy old. The creepy Fishing old guy. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No guy too. I got excited. Sorry. I just had a complete <laughs> moment. I just got geeked out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I thought that was really really cool. Um, well, the house the house was definitely the character, and and, and as mm-hmm. you watch it, like you just said, you, you figure out okay, that's why not everything is you know deteriorating. Yeah. And that and all that, but um. So where's the cosmic horror in this one to you? Uh, the the rituals. Um, because one. You got, ah, man, I was hoping for my fish family. I was so disappointed uh, because they started going down the lines of people and families and, and and what they did. I think whatever that family did in the house and then what the people did to get revenge, I'm trying to remember because it wasn't ex- extremely clear, but you saw the symbols. Right, so yeah. obviously they did it. And the guy, the, the, the adventures guy, Mr. Mr. I know it all. He's like, oh, this is some saying this shit. It's a pentagram. I'm like, no, it's not, you douchebag. <laughs> nice job. You're fired. <laughs> um that's not a pentagram you idiot <laughs> so like you definitely had like hints of like um something ritualistic happened maybe think of necronomicon right a lot of those symbols like uh-huh and <laughs> right next to me and um a lot of those symbols are very similar to like in this in this book obviously this is fake and um and so 
and the fact that it had that in mouth quality and into it and like families and down the line so it's very it's definitely like a lovecraft meets poe meets hitchcock it's got a combination of all three of these classic yeah. like there's a lot of themes in there and i i love the slow burn i was really all for it because it really held you but then once it got to the revelation was fine and i loved the entities that was stalking him that was creepy yeah that that's was some creepy that was some creepy very stuff. well done but then it fell right into the bad haunted house trope bullshit <laughs> Like the fun, I'm a let me tell you something. You got a slow burn. I want a final conflict that is a 10 minute banger. Okay, I want insanity. It was getting to that point, and then the conflict was it fell yeah. flat for me. And then, especially yeah. when the possession scene, it was so badly acted, I got so mad about it yeah. because, like, it's like you are saying shit we want to hear in like Lovecraftian type sense of horror and in, in, in dialogue, but you, you the, the douchebag just sounds like a bad acting douchebag now. Yeah, and the like, last oh, fifteen man. minutes of this, and I wasn't hooked all the way through, but you lost me that last fifteen minutes of this movie because yeah. you knew it was going to happen. It happens exactly like you think it was going to happen, yep. and it's poorly executed. Yep. the acting, all of it. The there, there's the big conflict is not a big conflict. You know yeah. what I mean? The 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 revelations are kind of info dumps for me yeah it was info dumps you're right that's why probably you missed one because i just remember there were sac I, I don't want to say too much but there were sacrifices that happened in the house so again there's right. there so not just rituals but sacrifices that happened um which is kind of neat they watched it on a on a uh on a um oh what's that thing called projector on the water yeah. that was kind of cool um but yeah well, there's a lot of those types of of things in this one it it didn't um Except for the catfish jumping out at you, that was the scary part, <laughs> you know. The rest and and the claustrophobic swimming around. It wasn't as bad as that Kristen Stewart where uh, movie that we watched where she's underwater in her underwear. So those, <laughs> that had some claustrophobic. Uh, <laughs> that uh, was very all oh, scenes too. Yeah, that movie. Whew, I'll tell you, even both these, I'm like, you won't catch me underneath there, man. No way. No. No way. But uh, um, yeah. All right, what else you got on this one? Uh, the but now the ending itself I liked a lot. I was at the edge of my seat of the ending because because of like of her breathing method because that was a good connection to to her. It was full circle. Yeah. And I was like, I was sitting there like, whoa, like that actually. And then it got me right back to like, and not just even Lovecraft, you know, even Poe, any form of haunted house, anything, or even Flanagan's done this it goes right to sacrifice. And I don't even think that says too much again, like the whole thing. And even with like, um, uh, even with Essentia, the sacrifice and trade off. So like the, you know, the tunnel was a character, the house, the character. So they kind of right. like almost intertwined a little bit, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. But yeah, I think that whole, I think the ending though, the foreshadowing of, of, of that was just too blatant. Yeah. Yeah. You immediately knew, <laughs> I mean, I, I swear, I'm not kidding. I watched the movie, and I'm immediately like, "This, this is a big, yeah, like this is how she's gonna die." Yeah, it, oh, it, you just, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or, survive. Saying, or survive, or survive, or survive. Right? This is, yeah. this is, yeah, this is gonna, this is the end of the movie for her character. This, yep, what we're seeing now, and that was. I'm like, not gonna lie, I forgot. Oh, I'm sorry, I get a little excited again. My bad. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, I was gonna say with you, like to go with that, but I did slightly forget until she started climbing out. Like, oh, here is that. Here's the portion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think was, well, you had to have it in there, but I think it was just. Yeah. I don't know. All right. What? One more quick thing. Did you catch? I don't know. It was part. I forgot if it was part of the end credits or middle credits. Did you catch the old man again? All right, I'll, I'll say it because now the old man he's leading two other girls to that spot. Oh, at his... the very very end, yeah, yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. It. And then they also have a peace sign in her neck too because remember let's talk about the peace sign yeah, yeah, with that yeah. man. So that was kind of cool. That was neat. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. I always fast forward to every movie I'm on. I always fast forward to the. You got to watch the very very end yeah. and see what they thought. Yep, I remember yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to the third one. <laughs> this is the Empty Man. From 2020, yeah, it's based on the graphic novel by Cullen Bunn. Yep. Wait a minute. Do I know? Did we? 
I interviewed Cohen on Armcast podcast. That's right, you did. Holy crap! He did, wow. He, he did the Conan. Uh, he did some of the Conan uh, run for uh, for Dark Horse Comics too. Very cool. So, I didn't know until I saw the end. So I got to the end of the movie and I saw the credits and I was like, "Holy crap!" I uh, I recognize that name. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, another full circle thing there. That's cool because I knew it was a graphic novel, but I forgot who did it. And we said yeah. the name. I was like, "Wait, that rings a bell." So yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I also read that this was filmed in August of 2017, and they shelved it mm-hmm. for three years because they had bad um, when they 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 threw it um, through some groups. They got uh, some uh, mixed reviews on it. From, mm-hmm. from focus groups and so basically they just put it away for like three years until they finally released it that's crazy yeah and it, and it has some it has very good and very bad reviews it's like you oh. love this movie or you hate this movie according to uh to what wow. i'm seeing yeah well, everybody so. i've heard talk about online loved it i never seen anybody who hasn't loved it which is interesting i usually know the movies are divisive. I didn't know this one was. That's wild. Yeah. Huh. So give you give us the uh, the basic uh, premise of this one. So this one, oh, another another Midwestern town. <laughs> you follow an ex cop who is uh, investigating a um, the disappearance of a teenage girl that leads to very crazy events, um, like like some insane stuff. Um, I mean, even when you read that and then you watch the first 30 minutes of this movie, you're like, what the hell is this? This is, this is completely different. And then when it goes into, it just keeps building and building. The, um, it feels like three different movies in it, but yeah. very well put together. The way it flows, uh, the way it gives you the intro um, to this different group of people, then, then the horrors they experience to following this ex-cop who's obviously going through something um some kind of traumatic event in his life and then he he knows he's very good friends with the mother of this teenage girl and uh and she's good friends he's good friends with a teenage girl and then once she disappears and some crazy writings on a wall like it just it 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 plays off so well well in that cosmic horror where it's like he, he, again unraveling a mystery but mm. as the mystery is unraveling it's told through different point of views, which I thought was kind of cool. So you got that investigative thing to it. Um, and then um, it just keeps getting, it just keeps getting crazier, crazier. Then he starts testing. Is it, he's like, is it, is he going mad? Is he, is he, is he not going crazy? So yeah, it was really, I, I really, um, I seen this one before, so I couldn't wait to really dig in this again. I think I watched it in 2020. Um, the be- and- the opening, the opening part I, I, is my favorite part. Yeah, the opening part, um, and of course I read the description of this, and then it, and then we, the way it opened, I'm like, am I what? I, I literally stopped it. Yeah, like five minutes. I'm like, am I watching the wrong movie? Is this? Is there <laughs> yeah, another man. one called, you know, The Empty Man? Am I watching the right movie here? Um, and so, and then I, I watched it, and I really dug that first part, and then it jumps. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the hell? What is going on? Like this yeah. has, um, and I was disappointed because I wanted to get back to that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That that the opening scene, the snow, the the people, the isolate, all of that. Mm-hmm. It was was great. And I was like, this is a, this is a lot of, this is fun for me. This was easily my favorite part of that. Yeah. And then you go completely, like you said, it's like three different movies. Yeah. You know, so it was it was definitely interesting. There were um, there were people that I I recognized. So, like in the beginning part, one of the women was um, the mom from Nasiratu. Oh, okay. And then um, the woman, I think, was in. Um, she's been in a bunch of different stuff. So she was in uh, Sneaky Pete. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was she was the sister in that one, so it's like you, you're seeing some minor people who are getting good roles in this one, you know. But it was it was yeah it was a little this one was a little weird. There wasn't a 
point A to B plot, which mm -hmm. the first two first two were. The first two were you just follow the story along and things things happen to them and then yeah. we get get to the end of the <laughs> of the movie. This one was a little weird. This one was you really had to pay attention of what does that first part have to do with the second part? And then yep. okay, what does that first part have to do with the third part of this? To, does this all tie back around, you know? And yeah. I think it I think it worked, but I think there was a lot of I think there was some holes in this one. Yeah. Plot wise and uh, character development wise. And I thought there were parts of this that um could have been edited. Could mm -hmm. have been edited better, you know, could have been kind of chopped. To me, this was like a uh, 100,000 word horror novel that could have been a 70,000 word horror novel. You know right, what I mean? Right. Like there was stuff in here that they really just loved so much. Even if it really didn't fit in with the narrative or with the tone or anything, they were like, let's keep those scenes in there anyway. I love, these are great scenes, you know? And and uh, it, it it pulls you out of the, the story a little bit. Yeah, I can see that. Um, Me, it didn't, I think the only part I seen was a plot hole is when you when you discover who he really is. That's a little weird. I have to like really rewatch that again to catch those little yeah. hints. But no, I I liked that it was so it felt nonlinear. You know, I I, I there's, there's so many there's few horror movies that are like two hours and twenty minutes long, and yeah. that I would watch over again. This is one of them I would. I mean, it, I mean, it's just it's just really. Uh, I got I got really sucked in because I really liked how you see the empty man creature for a good part of the beginning of the movie, but you don't see it anymore. It is little glimpses, and they get yeah. to the human part of it, and then it comes back. So it's like like you said, it's like it's really a lot of weird full circles, and I just I oh, I loved that. I thought it was really uh, it's just wild to me like that that type of this type of story. It was it's so different, so unique. Um, I just feel like it was needed for for the for for horror movies today. Where you know, and like you said, whatever it works for nobody, whatever right. works for somebody, it doesn't. It's definitely cool to see it. Like it does play out like a novel. It does play out like a graphic novel, and that's cool. You don't see that happen often. No. Um, and I, I I wish this was a ninety minute movie <laughs> with the beginning of the movie. I wish <laughs> that's that first, so, that's awesome. <laughs> that first fifteen minutes of this. You could have built on you could have built yeah. on that story because to me that was the interesting story. Yeah, that was the interesting story. Let's 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 learn about him out in the middle of nowhere. You know, let's yeah. let's do that. You don't really you don't do that often enough. And um, it wasn't bad. I mean the yeah. the you know uh, again it was I think it was just a little too long. I think there was there was parts of it that uh, that could have that could have been cut. I think you could have easily gotten that thing on under two hours mm -hmm. and shaved off a half an hour of a lot of um weird just for just to be weird yeah you know? i mean a, a lot of it it got to be it got to the point where i'm like all right yeah we get it it's okay we're, we're getting you're doing weird stuff and people are cults are almost there's cults in it yeah people are doing weird things so so where's the uh I, I, for you where's the cosmic horror then I obviously the cults, and then like it's a it's it's a mixture of cosmic horror and, and folklore. I love the folklore to this, yeah. but it's also the way they they call upon his entity, and then the, and then they start getting into the weird talk. It's very uh, true detective, like how yeah yeah um, I guess Matthew that. Will Matthew Will Willard Matthew McConaughey starts talking. His character starts talking all the weird like physio physiological shit, cosmos and mm -hmm. subconscious thought being the way it connects to you right so it, it's almost like watching a boogeyman story mixed with something out of a cosmic horror story like the fact they were intertwined all that together i just it hit me in all the right notes now i am going to spoil something there's a tentacle in there of course of course <laughs> i was happy there's a tentacle in there well yeah yeah the second time i know which lovecraftian cr creature this is Okay. And, I, and this is my only disappointment to the whole movie. They should have slowed that scene down when when they reveal the empty man underneath his Grim Reaper type robe. Right. The tentacle comes out on top of his head. I thought it came out of his face. It comes out on the top of his head. What Lovecraft character has a tentacle on the top of his head? I can't pronounce the goddamn name. Uh, <laughs> Nairo Thep. Nairo. Nairo Lothab. 
Yes, that's him. That is him, the trickster. And this whole thing had that feel of illusion and trickster and and oh yeah, the way he the way um he, uh because he loved um having people worship him and then people did right. that. They blew in the bottle. They call upon him. Um, they gave themselves to him again. Sa- sa- uh, sacrificial su- suicide, sac- sac- suicidal ritual, mystic stuff. You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> which that which that part was cool. The the I guess the the folklore part of it, the blowing in the bottle and 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 the the kids and all that. I I thought all those I thought all those yeah. parts were really neat. Um, I just thought there was too there was too much. Yeah. Too much that. too much of this movie. You know, at some point I I'm like I stopped it, and I'm like, holy crap! I got another hour of this. Like <laughs> this movie should have been over already. You know, you know. Horror movie, ninety minutes is a good horror movie, you know. Yeah, yeah, I but, get uh, it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I would uh, look online for the uh, that it took them so long to get this thing. I mean, it was made. It was just they shelved it for for three years. That's they, insane. Uh, they put this one on the shelf, like, and so it's kind of a weird, kind of a weird thing. What else you got on this one? No, that's it. I just couldn't wait to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 entity of what yeah. the empty man was. Well, oh, actually, it's funny. They, they they tell you what the empty man actually is. So the entity itself is not technically the empty man, but that's all I'm going to say. It, it it's it's right. um you know the way the, what it what the empty man serves as to this being and this entity. And I thought right. that was cool. But yeah, that's it. That was um I I enjoyed it. Um, if you want to see a great, if you want to see, a I great will watch it again this weekend. If you want to see a great uh horror movie watch the first 25 minutes <laughs> that's where that's where that's where it, it could have ended and i would have been happy uh the last one is black mountainside came out in 2014 yep so i will call this the thing in canada <laughs> i, I mean, did that on purpose <laughs> I, I mean I'm, I'm watching this and i'm like oh they stole that from the thing oh that's a scene from the thing Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a character from the thing. I was like, mm-hmm. "Holy crap!" They so it's it's a basically it's a team of um, explorers, whatever you want to call it, out in Canada in the middle of nowhere. Yep. And um, they find this, you know, what they're trying to figure out is it a sacrificial area? Is it a holy sacred mm-hmm. uh, thing? But it starts to kind of drive people crazy and uh the locals you know the 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 local uh Inuit tribes that are working there with them they all just run away or disappear one one night and uh people just start losing their friggin' minds and um they're isolated there's there's no way to to contact the outside world no the food's not arriving supplies are not arriving and uh, of course you got a new guy who's flown in to uh to help with the operation and Maybe that last name says the thing <laughs> huh? almost, that last name olson sounds like the thing yeah it's, make, it's giving me it's giving me a swedish doctor feel <laughs> yeah exactly so it's yep. it's like i mean it's 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 so the th- it's you know it's the thing in canada i mean it's basically yep. what what this movie what this movie was as far as people slowly losing their minds you're you're isolated you don't trust the next guy. Uh, weird, unexplained shit is happening to people, and people are just doing insane things. They're they're yep. you know b- blowing their heads off and they're cutting their hands off and they're just doing. It's, it's the insanity is is progressing uh, so much, and you literally it's not like okay, let's everybody get in the car and we're gonna just drive two hours. Right. Just, you know they're trapped there. They, there's no way out of there. And um, so I thought that was uh, I thought it was interesting. The the outside night shots, I thought mm-hmm. were uh, I thought were great. Yeah, because you're seeing something in the distance or maybe you're not. You're um, you're you, you're in the character's head. You're 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 running down uh, a snow covered path trying to get to the next place and you're hearing stuff you know, coming all, all over the place. And I have the uh, surround sound. So it was like noises. Oh, that'd be fun. It was like noises all around you and stuff, which is really neat. Um, 
So like all that stuff I thought was was cool. Um, they don't explain a ton of what's going on. You're just kind of like, well, we're watching a horror movie, and mm-hmm. it's a, it's again we're we're looking at a folklore, um, you know, uh, type of thing. So you just kind of go, okay, well, you know, it's 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 Indian, it's Inuit folklore, and that's we're gonna, you know, um, you know, is it the Wendigo? Is it, <laughs> you know, that's what you're. That's basically what you're uh, what you're looking at in this one. Yeah, see this one, ah. Uh... I liked the slow build on this because it, it really gave the isolation to it where like the thing almost, it gave that feeling, but instead of like finding a being in ice, like you said, they find this, this structure, they think it's a temple or what they couldn't figure out what was. And then um, they try to figure out it's almost, you know, the, the native um, scripters, it looks close to something almost Aztec, but it's not. So obviously it's some kind of ancient civilization. I'm like, wow, this is, this is, this to me is even a little little Lovecraftian. You got the not one archaeologist. You have a team now, right? So now it plays off the thing where it's the paranoia and everybody's going nuts. But it's not like which is weird. It, it it acts like a bacteria, but it doesn't. I'd like that explanation how it plays off plagues of its time, and and this is why I get disappointed because they they were really leading towards something like some kind of intelligence. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I was when they when they told about like you know oh you know we found traces of of occupy in did you say that right octi you know like in in this guy's body other than all to uh, yeah, autopsy right. and I'm like there better be tentacles in this <laughs> and I was so pissed because I would do a spoiler man that dead thing was dumb I was so mad at that dead thing like, <laughs> it looks cool at first the first time you see it because you yeah. can't tell then when you get closer I was like all right. Because then now you're losing the cosmic horror you started with, and you're yeah. going too much towards the folklore, you know. And this is what you felt about Empty Man is how I felt about this actually, which is really funny. Not the time, right? The, the obviously not the time because it's like ten times shorter, an hour shorter. It's the fact they threw all these good ideas in it, and they didn't stay right. They should have stayed right in because you got people going mad. That's very Lovecraftian cosmic horror. You got ancient civilizations. You got like. There's a lot of stuff in there that. But did they? Like, but did they back up any of them? I mean, this would have been problem. a great. That's this would have been problem. a great folklore movie, or it would have been a great cosmic horror movie, yeah. or it was just a complete ripoff of the it, thing. It, it could. It could have been the Nameless City. It yeah. could have been the Nameless City. It was, so, they, it was close to that. But they, they kind of like you say, went like, "Hey, we love all these ideas and all these these tropes. Let's throw them all in and see if we can do this." I hate when people do that. Yeah, and that's. And that's and that's what it was. That's what yep. this movie was. This movie was. Let's see how much we can throw in here because we probably have individually we have fifteen minute movies we can make mm-hmm. of this. But if we put them all together, we can we can do four different mishmashes movies. <sighs> yeah, because you got you got a talking dead body. I thought that was cool. You got, and that's what I love about the slow burn. Like like, it would just be normal, and all of a sudden one guy just throw up blood. Uh, then the next one chopped off his own hand. Yeah. And then, and like you got these, and then like that, you got things growing in a dude's arm. Why didn't you stay with that? Was that yeah. an octopus head? Was the veins turned tentacles? You talk about maggots in the eyes. I, yeah. Where's the damn maggots on the eyes? I was so mad at that because it had yeah. such a really cool. Those scenes themselves, I was like, "Whoa, this is neat. Where's this gonna go?" But I was they're, like, they're they're great scenes just to have special effects and scenes. Mm-hmm. You're not really explaining... great practical effects. Yeah, you're not explaining it. You're not doing anything yeah. with it there's no for me there was a lot of those scenes where there was no there was no money shot at the end right that's there it, was the money there, shot there was no payoff uh, uh for a lot of the ideas that they had and i thought that was the that was a problem like was it a, ru- a rushed script was it well we don't have time to do everything we want to do so let's just kind of throw these things in there uh and let the the audience go, oh, that's really cool, and then they're gonna move yeah. on to the next thing, and I th- and that's kind of what it what it what it was to me. It was like you're not giving us you're not giving us the whole movie. You're not giving us everything that you no. could be giving us. It could have been 
because I, I got that feeling of the thing. When I watched the trailer, I was like, oh, we are doing this. I want, because I knew it was like, hey, it's going to have a feel of a thing rip off. I said, we got to talk about this. We don't love it, hate it, but we are talking about this. Yeah. And um, and then, then when it got to certain things where they're hearing things in their heads, I was like, whoa, I didn't expect this. And then the, the, the folklore stuff, like the dare thing. I was like, because at first I was like, oh, holy crap, is this going to be the thing meets evil dead? But instead of like demons, it's some kind of like al- alien intelligence. That would have been, that'd been fantastic. That would have been yeah. cool. But no, we didn't go that route. Bastards. And the ending sucked. The ending was the ending itself. Yeah, the doctor yeah. was like, that, like, he got, I'm, spoiler alert, people, but he got his leg stuck in the bear trap. That's how he ended it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, what is that? Supposed to be sarcasm? Like, like, oh, it would have been better if they, it, <laughs> it would have been better if they had two people alive. Mm-hmm. They didn't know if either the other one was, was, uh, was the alien and they were sitting familiar. out. familiar. <laughs> Freezing to death. We just totally rip it off already, you know. I mean, you got, then you, you, Kurt Russell comes out of nowhere. He's like, "I'm still alive, boys." Right. That would have been a great ending. Then, then I would have. That would have been a great ending. So yeah. So that's um. That was it. so. There. You got anything else on this one? No. That was. That was all I need. That was. That was just fun to talk about. Just that. I, I literally, my note on this one is the thing in Canada is what it says on it. my post. I, I was uh, like. Whatever happens in the last 15 minutes of this movie is how I'm going to rate this movie on my on my top four. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's uh we so we've watched all four. Like I said, I had never seen any of these movies. I never yeah. even heard of these movies. That's I don't, cool. You know, you know I don't watch horror movies. Yeah. So uh which was interesting. So uh doing that. So what uh we're gonna start with we're gonna start with number four. I'll start this this okay. this okay. time. My my least favorite of all of these is the deep house. Wow. That's my number four. I did not like the characters. Mm -hmm. I thought the house, even though the house is a character and I get it, Mm -hmm. I did not like that. Everything wasn't, uh, waterlogged and screwed up. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the pacing of this one all that much. I didn't like the, um, I I didn't like a lot about, (laughs) about this. Yeah. Yeah. This was a, this was a bad, to me, this was a bad '80s horror movie yep. that we used to rent uh, at the local place before Blockbuster came around. This was Good one of times. those. Yeah, this is one of those. Okay, let's eat a pizza and mm-hmm. and we're gonna watch this movie, and then we're gonna watch five more that are just basically just like it. Uh, so it really did nothing for me. So that's my number four. What's your four? Black Mountain Side. Yeah. Uh, that that uh, it would have been a little bit higher if. That ending did not happen the way it did. Just, just give the man a good ending, and he. They, they I just, do it. I that payoff to me would have been some kind of like, octi come out of some dudes, ocu <laughs> octopus come out of some dudes eyeball. Right. I would be so happy with that, but nope, they didn't <laughs> give me it. So I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> my my number three, is Absentia. I thought it was um. I thought it was too low budget. Mm-hmm. I like the uh, again. The acting is not great. The acting is like, was all right. The lead, um, the pregnant chick, I thought she was cute. She's a big girl. Mm-hmm. So I enjoyed that part. Um, but other, otherwise, it wasn't, I don't think there was a payoff on this one. Yeah. I think they had weird just to be weird in this one as well. And I was like, yeah. So that's my number three. My number three is Deep House. Um, I, liked the pacing because of the underwater and then the fact you, you never seen a house in the water before so the concept really gets you i like the fact i caught in's mouth um at least i thought i, I saw in's mouth i could be wrong but you know the the lot of crafting themes i caught along the way so i like that build up but then what happens in the house turned too typical for a haunted house story yeah and, it, and then so that's and then and then that you know again the payoff like that that final fight scene before the um before Tina tries to escape was like oh man cheese ball yeah like, that was bad age like I said that was bad yeah. like oh you could not you could not stay away from this type of trope it just went it just went complete cheese ball so yeah that was number three for me it would be number, number four it would be number four if Black Mountain site didn't screw up <laughs> my number two is uh Black Mountain side is it because of the thing rip off <laughs> Yeah, but I think they. I think compared to the other two movies that I mentioned, compared to those two, I think yeah, 
at least I was interested. At least it gave me something. Other than those other ones, I'm like, um, I, you know, I, I, I'm I'm not into this movie. I don't believe it. Yeah. This one, at least with the isolation and the snow and some of the crazy things that people were were doing, it, even though there weren't too many of the trade offs, I still was like, you know, I still I still liked it. You know, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't. I didn't think the ending was great, but I did not like the ending on on any of these movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all four of them for me could have could have uh, could have done better. Ah. Now, I I I was predicting Black Mountain side might be on the bottom for you, but that's really that's really, it's really cool to see to see how different this is than our normal uh, list. Oh yeah, yeah, we're normally pretty damn close with not Yeah, this is cool. What's your two? Absentia um i love the low budget quality of it um i like the originality i like the there's a lot i just i just the way it just kept unraveling things and in that tunnel and i thought it was really cool and um and the way they kept the way they switched throughout the characters heads to tell the story and it ended with like how the cops saw everything the way everything ended like that i just i thought it was really neat um maybe i'm biased i'm a big mike flanagan fan but then again i wasn't really a huge fan of his this movie made me more of a fan of mm. his years ago so and then now to see you know stuff later so i i can't i can't i guess i can't say i'm biased i just think i just thought it was like really actually you know what now i remember lovecrafty and easy and i heard about this they they put it in their lovecrafty and cosmic horror list oh okay that's how i think that's how i, I, I was like oh shoot that's mike flanagan because i saw oculus and then i'm like i gotta check it out because that cover is terrible that cover it does like make you not want to watch the movie <laughs> um so but that's my number two so then obviously my number one is going to be the empty man and only for that first 15, 20 minutes of this movie, <laughs> I, I I was a big fan of that. I really I really enjoyed that. I liked the um, you know the uh, the temple. I liked the mm-hmm. uh, you know they're 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 wandering around the Himalayas or wherever they were, and you got uh, you got all of that. You know you got a, a truckload of monks going by and staring at them and stuff. I, mm-hmm. I liked it. I thought it was I thought it was well put together that first section of the movie you know uh the the thing whatever coming out of the the the, the snow slowly Oof. towards her that's a great scene that's a, that's a terrifying scene yeah that's a great scene you have you have no idea what's going to happen you don't you don't know what uh what's going to happen what was the movie that you made me watch and it was like in the middle, they were, it was like a Western. I think it was during the Western one where the girl goes outside and she kills the goat. The wind. Okay. So remember, it was like, it was, to me, it was like that scene. She walks out and there's a, um, a, a dust storm coming by. Mm-hmm. And I get, you know, she's so isolated and everything. And, that for me, like that scene was like it reminded me of of, uh, of that, but much better, much a much stronger scene. That's and I think cool. if you would if you would trap those people in that house on that mountain for ninety minutes, I would have bought into it. I would have loved it. You know, that would have been that would have been the movie for me. I would have I would have loved it. So while I didn't hate the the rest of it, I thought it paled in in comparison right. to that opening shot. And again. You're, none of these movies gave me the ending that um, that I think the movie should have had. You know, there's a difference between okay, let's let's just give the let's give the ending that we know we're gonna do, and and it's kind of telegraphed, which is what happened in all of these. Yeah. Um, I guess rather than let's just go totally crazy and and have something really weird at the end. I mean, they just kind of. They set it up. You knew exactly what was going to happen on all of these movies, and I think that was the disappointment for me. Yeah. Well, my number one is Empty Man as well, and I had a feeling that was going to happen, but not the. But I thought you might enjoy Empty Man a little more than that. I love the fact you love the first thirty minutes. <laughs> right. I had a feeling you love the first thirty minutes, but I didn't know. Um, you know, like I was like, oh man, it's got cult in it. It's all kinds of weird shit. <laughs> like you know, this is this is my type of weird. Both this and Essentia, and I love the endings to both these movies. Hated the endings to the. Well, I didn't mind the ending of Deep House, but I still hated the other two a little more right. near the end because again, like to me, the payoff was there for both my number my my top spot movies, Essentia, The Empty Man. Um, that you know, I, I that, that had to pay off for me. So, but yeah. Right. 
All right. Very good. Well, I like that one. That was a good, uh, interesting. Again, it was movies that I had not seen. Plus, you you picked these pretty quick, too. Once you said you were going to get them, it wasn't. Unfortunately, a lot of times it's like, oh, let's pick four movies. And then one of them I can't watch for some reason because I'm not paying for uh, I'm not paying for anything. Deep House got off Hulu when I went to watch it. I had to rent it. So you, you, you like, <laughs> I was like, son of a bitch, really? Yeah, see, I, wa- so, I, yeah, I watched it on Hulu. Tubi, um, I love, I love Tubi because you Tubi's can. Tubi's cool. You can, you can search for like five hours. Like literally, um, the other night when my wife, uh, last night when my wife wasn't home, I watched the um, Cloverfield Paradox, mm-hmm. and then I watched something else I don't remember, and then I went on Tubi to search for another movie before I went to bed. And literally for like an hour, I just like documentaries. There's like 10,000 of them. And I just kept going. <laughs> you know. And I'm like, oh, another one about God. Another one about Jesus. Another one about aliens. Oh, another one about <laughs> what uh, <laughs> Jesus alien. Oh, Bigfoot. Oh, Jesus and Bigfoot. Like there's just so many. That's things. a rabbit hole, dude. <laughs> yeah. So like for an hour, I was like, all right, I'm going to bed now. Like I've, I've wasted my time just going through like a thousand of them. And uh, just looking at these crazy documentaries that are that are out there, not even going through horror or anything. I mean, yeah. every everything on there is there's a million uh, crazy. Oh, I watched um, uh, Metal Lords. Oh, how that looks funny. How was that? It was, all right. it was it was like a young adult. It was kind of like School of Rock, but but metal with metal. That's but good they, for the kids. That's good for the kids, right? Yeah, <laughs> you would you would like it. You're a kid. <laughs> they talk about they, they 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 talk about Slipknot in it, which I was like, yeah, whatever. But um, it's a lot of whoever wrote it obviously is a metalhead because yeah. it's a lot of Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Ozzy, on and on. But it's a kids, you know, it's a kids movie, I guess. Although they there's a lot of profanity in it, which I liked. Yeah, yeah. But um, kind of a coming of age um kind of thing and of course the ending is you know you know what's going to happen mm-hmm. you know it's it's cheesy but it's still it's a fun movie um it was all right <laughs> you know what i do love about watching horror movies on tubi is like there's always it's always like the weird or crazy scenes and then you see ad starting in 10 seconds right when someone's like freaking <laughs> yeah. out i'm like yeah. why is with this timing every time every time i watch yeah. uh and um, right, right in the middle of somebody's sentence, they they just it just <laughs> got so in. weird. Yeah, um, I do love the fact with this that you asked why I thought cosmic horror. So that was cool because like they also different different. It gives different perspectives of talking right. like well, how did you see cosmic horror? Because I don't see that, and I thought that was neat. I thought it was yeah. very cool. Well, that was it. So I'm watching. I'm like, all right. I I, I on most of these, I'm like, all right, I guess you can you can push it and say it's cosmic horror. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're you're saying it's cosmic horror. Because you got it, you got it from a list or whatever. Of these are cosmic horror movies, or however you you come up with your 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 picks. So for me, it was like, are they are they actually cosmic horror movies, or are we just saying they're cosmic horror movies kind of thing? So right, right. I'm interested to see what your next uh, your next picks will be. That'll be uh, that yes. will be fun. I think uh, I think I have an idea. I think I have an idea. Perfect. Perfect. You got an idea? Let's. I got an uh, idea. It might be a little challenging, but I like challenges. You know exactly. And then we can get that in. We'll probably uh. Well, we'll, we'll hopefully we can get that in, in May before MondoCon. Okay. We, we can do it before Mondo because I don't think we're gonna have time during, everybody being here to do it. Yeah. And um, but that would be uh, pretty cool. So so come up with that as quick as you can, so we can get that uh, we can get that put together. Excuse me. And then I'll, I'll just figure out when my wife is going on, uh, going to Atlanta again. You Every month she goes, so that'd be pretty cool. All right, man. Tell everybody who you are and where they can find you. I am JC Walsh. You can find me on Amazon.com. Uh, you can find me on my other show, Bonded by Horror. Um, we we break down one horror movie and talk forever about it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um Oh shoot, my brain is stopped. You can find me on Twitter, JC Horror Writer, uh, Facebook, JC Walsh, both Slasher and Instagram, JC Walsh81. I'm also JC Horror on TikTok because I've been doing writer vlogs now. Right. Finally, I'm getting a little more confident with you know talking into talking all by myself instead of 
communicating with you or my co-host or when we do interviews and stuff like that, that's just easier now. I'm a little more comfortable, but trying to talk about myself, it just feels so freaking weird. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been fun. Um, yeah, that's it. You check me out. Obviously, I'm on Amazon, uh, Twitch. You can check me out usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern. I write a, a short story live, and then people are in the chat, and then they're making fun of me or making fun of each other or talking or asking questions or whatever. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and then, uh, yeah, ArmandRosamilia.com. Check that out. It has all of my different uh, links and whatnot there. So check us out. And obviously, I'm on this YouTube. I do uh, Ask Me Anything questions. I do a lot of other uh, different things besides this. So check us out if you um, if you have movies, horror movies, or uh, if it's a horror movie or it's to the left or to the right, <laughs> let us know. Get us some ideas. Send JC a message. Mm-hmm. Don't start posting stuff all over the place. Just send JC a message and uh, say, hey, I got an idea for, for a theme. And um, oh, hell yeah. we'll have some movies. I do not like, as JC knows, I do not like uh, slasher. I do not like bloody, disgusting. I do not like, you know... Uh, crazy 15 minute rapes in the movies or no, no no crazy stupid stuff i'd like uh quiet horror movies and weird horror movies so like the crap we've been watching that yep. kind of thing so i push it a little bit on the gore but it's nothing too too extreme. no it's yeah you it's it's never anything where it's like uh it's 45 minutes of uh of a dude with a hockey mask chasing people around <laughs> and finding new ways. I don't to know kill anything on, about that. <laughs> kill them on hooks and stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's why I got to keep warning you. Uh, all right, man. It was good right. seeing you again. And we you will too. do this again next week or next month.